Well, uh, the, 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 the questioner is uh, perfectly entitled to point out that it seems logical to him that the resting place of the designer uh, here on Earth uh, would be at rest and that the cosmos thus moves. It is perfectly reasonable. As a matter of fact, the greatest minds in human history in the pre-scientific age were perfectly aware of the possibility of a heliocentric solution being uh, applicable as well as a geocentric. And they came down on the side, I'm talking about Aristotle and Plato, for example, came down on the side of the geocentric model for just that reason, that they, that they considered it to be a more comprehensive and accurate view of reality to consider the geocentric view to be right for us. And uh, uh, Wolfgang, of course, has approached it from both that position, but also from the position of, of physics itself. Yeah, but let me just point out that the way the ancients uh, understood heliocentrism and geocentrism, they realized that there's no contradiction between the two. These are two different ways of looking at reality. Mm -hmm. Both are necessary. Uh, incidentally, this is something that uh, I found so wonderful when I was uh, acquainting myself with what we in the West call uh, Indian philosophy. Uh, the, 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 the Sanskrit word for philosophy is darshana, from the word drish, to see. And so a darshana is not a philosophy as we understand the term, it's a point of view. In other words, to see something you have to look and that requi requires a choice of direction. And there are, in the nature of things, uh, six fundamental directions. And so in India you have six darshanas. <laughs> and the one that is regarded in a sense the highest is called the Vedanta, but it's the highest in the sense that it points directly up. But that doesn't mean that the other five directions aren't also necessary. Each has its own uh, message. So it's we in the West, uh, in modern West, I, I don't think that was true in, in Greek times, but in the modern West, we have this either-or philosophy. Uh, the Hindus in that regard are much wiser. They realize it's not a question of either-or. There are different ways of looking at things and they all have their truth, and they all also, by the same token, have their limitations. So uh, heliocentrism and geocentrism are two darshanas, and they are both true, each in its own right, and the important thing that uh, was quite clear, I think, in ancient times was that, in a sense, the heliocentrism is exoteric as compared to the uh, geocentrism, because what we actually perceive through the senses uh, corresponds obviously to geocentrism. Here we stand and we look at the universe. So the heliocentrism is uh, a higher way of looking at things where you look not with your senses but with your intellect. And there the sun is at the center of the universe because the sun is the cosmic manifestation of God. It gives light, in a sense it gives being to all that is in the universe. So uh, heliocentrism has its own truths, but on a physical level, uh, in, in relation to the equations of physics, it is false, demonstrably so. Very interesting.